guys. So, um, earlier this week I had my uh, phone appointment with my endo. Um, luckily my MRI came back clean, so it's just a momentary spike. But, um, she sent over a package that has all the information for, um, getting bottom surgery, um, through the clinic in Montreal with Dr. Brassard. So I thought it might be nice to do a little, um, unboxing video, I guess, with you guys. Um, show you what's in there and a little information. I haven't opened it yet. Um, I covered these up so I'm not doxing myself or my endo. But yeah, let's take a look. My appointment sheet right here. That's it. That's my next appointment. Now, okay. So, this one, it's another document here. This one's for my blood work. The old thing right here. Have to go do that. Um, now it's only, I'm only seeing my endo once a year because my levels have been pretty stable. Um, I've hit my target mark for um, testosterone, I'm holding at about 2.5, whereas the target mark was about 5. Uh, so that's good. That's good. We'll see. Okay, so now the actual documents. It's, um, says gender confirming surgery, prior approval request. Um, gender confirming surgery, or GCS, is insured under the Medicare insurance plan when prior authorization has been obtained from the Medicare medical consultant. Instructions. Um, um, blah blah blah. For A, this GCS application form must be completed to request prior approval for payment by Medicare. Um, as my endo explained, pause here for a second. As my endo explained, um, basically in the Maritimes, Atlantic Canada. Um, there's a deal with the Medicare, so you can go, um, it pays for it entirely, so you can get to go see Dr. Brassard with it, and which is great because he's the one that I want anyway. He's a well-renowned surgeon and very good. Um, and so, yeah, it's luckily it's covered. The only thing I have to pay for is my train ticket up to Montreal and then back, which I've taken a train there before. It's not bad. Um, I've got a few friends in Montreal who, you know, I might be able to catch up with. It would be really nice to be able to, you know, see the sites before I do everything. Um, B, if completed manually, please, uh, please print clearly and ensure that all sections of this form are submitted. Um, this G C, this GCS application form must be completed by a physician or mental health professional that meets version 7 or the latest version of the World Professional Association for Transgender Health or WPATH, um, standard, care standard of Care, Appendix B. Um, so yeah, I, I, was, I was told prior that yes, I would need um, a letter from a physician or, or and a mental health professional. Um, so basically a referral letter. Um, I've got a referral letter before for my IDs from my psychiatrist, and my endo said that she'd be more than willing to get my other form, so that's, that'll be all covered when the time comes. Um, right now, because of the coronavirus happening, I know there's a lot of, um, the surgery's being put on hold, so there's gonna be a big backlog. Um, it's, so it's probably gonna take, I don't know, sorry, just the camera. Um, it's probably gonna take me still a couple years to get everything situated and ready and wait for the backlog to drain a little bit so I can get, um, on the list. Anyway, ugh, keep sliding. Sorry. <laughs> anyway, um, yep, yep, there's the referral letters. Um, physician mental health. Submitting a request for prior authorization may also be one of the providers completing a referral letter. So that's my end down that works. Um, referral letters commending sur recommending surgery must be completed by an appropriately trained physician or mental health professional who meets um, WPATH minimum credentials as described in Appendix B. Um, 
So, and my endo specifically told me that I need two. It says there's an option for one and an option for two, but I'm gonna get I'm gonna get both just to be safe. Um, F referring providers will be notified regarding the outcome of this funding application, and then there's the address for where you forward the form and attachments to. Um, H the surgeon and his team will assess the documentation and, if satisfied, will send the satisfactory and complete form and formal request indicating the proposed surgery to the New Brunswick Medicare Medical Consultant for approval of funding. Um, okay, this one does not apply to me because this is for patients who will not be referred to Montreal, but Montreal is the one I'm obviously being referred to. Um, I'm working with my endo for this, so she's been very, very helpful. She. Um, she always asks me off after appointments if I have any questions, and this was the real big one that I, because it's, it's coming up. Um, it's something I want to kind of get ahead on, so I figured, yeah, I might as well ask her, and she was kind enough to send over this package for me so I could take a look and see. Okay, so this is all the paperwork here. You actually have to fill out, if you can see that very well. There we go. So it's basically, um, provide your personal information, you need your first and last name, middle name, address, phone number, date of birth, Medicare, and exp expiry date, um, complete patient declaration, yes, I'm a permanent resident of New Brunswick, yes, I am registered with Medicare NB and possess a med valid Medicare card, I am 18 years or older, I am actually 29, I turned, 20, I turned uh, 29 in January of 2020, um, um, I understand that mastectomy with chest masculinization, including implants, hysterectomy, and salpingoophorectomy for the purpose of GCS, are only publicly funded if performed in Canada, preferably MB. That one would be for um, uh, top surgery for female to male patients. That's not something that will apply to me, but I still want to check yes, because I obviously I understand. Um, I understand that genital reconstruction for the purpose of GCS are only publicly funded if performed at um, the Centre Metropolitan de Chigri Montreal, Quebec. I'm very not I'm not very good with my French. I'm sorry. I live in a bilingual province, so I try. I try to be better with speaking French, but I'm not like I'm not super good. So. Eh. Um, I understand there's no public funding for available available for GCS services outside of Canada. GCS services received without prior approval from the medical consultant of the New Brunswick Health Department of Health. Any services which are not insured by Medicare NB, including but not limited to facial feminization, liposuction, tracheal shave, voice pitch surgery, breast augmentation, and hair removal. Now, um, the only other surgery that I am seriously thinking about would be um, a tracheal shave. Um, I did know that this, that specifically wasn't covered, but that's a good um, sort of reminder to know, you know what's covered and what isn't. And I do know that this changes from province to province, so it's, it's a little bit different um, where you go, but this is the current um, um, state of things for the Maritimes and New Brunswick specifically. So, um... Oh, also not available for public funding is any take-home medications, equipment, meals, travel accommodation, or other personal expenses. So, pretty standard. And then you have to basically sign the certification and consent. Um, you certify that the information on this form is completely accurate. And I understand that my personal health information collected on this form and the attached supporting documents will only be used to process my request and will not be disclosed my, without my consent unless required by the law. And you put your name, your signature, and the date. So yes, obviously I will not be filling out this form in front of you with all my personal information. So, um, and here on the next page we have um, the, the information for your referring physician or mental health professional and a declaration by them, as well as their, the primary clinical criteria that they have to verify. Um, they have to verify that the patient has persistent, well-documented gender dysphoria diagnosis, um, and I've been seeing my psychiatrist for, jeez, like, maybe since 2014, or maybe as far back as 2012, actually. I've been seeing him for quite a few years now, um, even before I came out and started transitioning, 
And then I eventually started seeing him um, for specifically my gender dysphoria afterwards. So it's been um, at least four years that he's known about this. And like I said, he's gotten me referrals before. Um, if, um, going back to the name real quick, uh, providing your first and last name and middle name and stuff, that's why I kind of want to get my IDs and stuff all done. It's not a prerequisite um, for, for my... Um, for my documentation, I don't need to have my name officially changed, or my gender marker officially changed, but that is what I want to do beforehand, so I can have everything nice and proper, I can put female on my all my things, I'll show it up on my ID, have my middle names changed. Anyway, um, and then, okay, and back to the clinical criteria. So you need to have the capacity to make a fully informed decision and consent for treatment, you have to understand the procedure and the associated risks and complications. Um, I did go over this with my endo on the phone, and I imagine I'll have to go over it again a few times, but that's, that's entirely fine. I've been looking at a lot of, um, doing a lot of research myself, looking at a lot of videos, and a lot of other people's testimonials about, you know, their experience with um, uh, gender confirmation surgery. So, um, uh, more criteria. Reasonably well-controlled medical or mental health concerns if they are present and have an aftercare follow-up plan. That one in particular is going to be the big one for me because I'm going to have to take at least a quarter of the year off. Um, three to four months, so a quarter to a third of the year. Um, and right now, that means I'm probably going to have to go on EI because um, I don't have a medical plan through the company that I work for. But um, it's something that I'll have to talk about with my boss, um, who's also the owner of the company, thankfully. Makes it a little bit easier. Um, and I'll work with him, and so we, I, he'll know to, you know, get help for the building that I'm cleaning up and to, you know, keep me on afterwards and be apprised of the situation, so. But yeah, the aftercare plan is going to be the big one, you know, having people help me out and stuff, but luckily, I do live with my sister right now, and even if I do end up moving upstairs, she will be still living down here. I'm in the apartment we are right now, so it shouldn't be too bad. Um, I'll have people there to help me. And then the next section we have is specific clinical criteria. There's a section for breast surgery. Um, it's, for, it's for mastectomy with chest mac masculinization. So again, this is for male to f or female to male, sorry. Um, and basically, yep, you just need the referral and you need that the, the patient has reached the age of 18. For the genital surgery, um, yeah, I need two letters signed by a GCS trained and qualified mental health professional. And um, if the first supporting letter is from a physician or mental health professional who mainly has a clinical relationship with the patient, the second referral letter must be from a different phys physician or mental health professional who had an evaluative, evaluative role with the patient. So that, um, that works for me, right? My endo and my psychiatrist, both of them, it'll work for my referrals. You also need to have 12 continuous months of hormone replacement therapy as appropriate to the patient's gender roles, um, unless there is a medical contradiction, contradiction, or inability or unwillingness to undergo hormone replacement therapy. Um, I've been on hormone therapy for almost two years. It'll be two years in September, so I'm good. And the patient has reached the age of 18, which I've surpassed that by a decade. So, um, next section we have genital reconstruction. All of the genital surgery criteria cited above and the 12 continuous months of living in a gender role that is congruent with their gender identity, unless a specific person has been stated, a specific reason, sorry, has been stated in the referral letter. Um, there's additional clinical criteria section. The patient is physically fit and has no significant health problems that, that would contradict, contradictate, I'm sorry, I, <laughs> I know English is my first language and English is really good, but I'm a better writer than a speaker, I'm sorry. Um, the patient is psychologically prepared for surgery. I've been doing my utmost. I am preparing myself psychologically. The patient has realistic goals and expectations for the surgery. The patient is informed of and understands any alternative, alternative procedures. The patient has engaged in a responsible way with assessment and treatment process. 
The patient has an adequate support network, a stable lifestyle, and the gender identity of the individual has remained stable over time. Check, 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 and check. Um, and then proposed procedures for which a prior approval is requested. Please list the recommended procedures for which prior approval is being requested. Please refer to the complete list in Appendix C. Um, let's see, Appendix C. Quick, that's Appendix A. Okay, so we'll jump real quick to Appendix C. Um, this is a list of procedures in gender confirming surgery. Um, there is breast surgery. So the mastectomy with chest masculinization, excluding implants, which are not covered. Um, and the above should be formed in a public hospital in Canada, preferably New Brunswick. Um, now here's the ones that apply to me. Genital surgery. The following procedures must be conformed in a public hospital in Canada prior to a referral for genital surgery at the um, Center for Surgery in Montreal. So there's the salpingo oophorectomy. There's the hysterectomy, where the cervix must be completely removed, and a pathology report confirming this must be provided to the, cent to the Montreal Center. Or solo procedures, which is the orchiodectomy, which can be formed as a solo procedure if no vaginoplasty is intended in the future. Um, actually, I don't believe any of those apply to me, so I'm not looking to get an orchiectomy. Um, and then the genital reconstruction at the Montreal Center which is vaginoplasty, which includes the oreectomy, panectomy, reconstruction or construction of the vulva, labia majora, labia minora, and clitoris, and if described, desired by client, construction of the vaginal cavity. That's, that's exactly what I want. That's what, exactly what I'm going for. Um, we also have the metodioplasty, the phalloplasty, construction of the urethra, insertion of testicular implants, and insertion for penile implants. All of those that I just listed, again, those are for female to male patients. I don't know a whole lot about gender-confirming uh, gender surgery for f um, female to male patients. Um, I do know that it requires a lot, a lot. Um, so, but that's, that's what all I know from the list and, you know, things I've heard. So, um, but let's see, we'll go back here. So that's all the criteria. Um, aha, now we have the supporting documents it, you have to, that you, which you have to attach. Um, you need one to two referral letters um, signed by a GCS training qualified mental health professional. Um, proof of training from a physician and mental health professionals or signed declaration that confirms the referent is tra has training in the area of GCS or gender dysphoria, which may be included in the referral itself or completed in Appendix D. Other required attachments, if applicable, um, a report from the physician who has been prescribing and supervising the hormone replacement therapy, or HRT, which is my endo, and operative reports of the patient's prior GCS or treatment, which I don't have, so that one's, that one's okay. And then you need a certification and recommendation signature um, from your professional saying that they certify the information is complete and accurate and that you recommend the client for gender conforming surgery. So you need their name, their signature, and the date. And there's one from the Department of Health staff use only. Um, so that's, you know, when that goes to the Medicare one, that's what they fill out. So I don't have to worry about that one. Um, the Medicare consultant will fill, will sign and date that, and they've, you know, read over everything, and they know that it's okay, and, you know, everything matches up. Um, this is the process where, you know, you can have all the information in order, but then you, for, you know, you forget one thing, or you miss one thing, or you mess one thing up just slightly, and then they send it all back to you, you have to fill it out again, make sure it's all good, and you send it off. It, it can be a big hoopla, which, you know, that's why I try to be very, very careful with it. Um, with all my forms, it's just classic, classic, um, you know, government work. But it's good to be specific, you know, you can't mess up stuff like that. So, let's keep going. This Appendix A, content, okay, so this is what the content of the referral letters need to be. Um, number one, the client's general identifying characteristics. Number two, the results of the client's psycho psychosocial assessment, including any diagnoses. Three, the duration of the mental health professional's relationship with the client, including the type of evaluation and therapy or counseling to date. An explanation of the criteria for surgery have been met, and a brief description of the clinical rationale for supporting the patient's request for surgery. 
a statement about the fact that informed consent has been obtained from the patient, and a statement that the mental health professional is available for coordination of care and welcomes a phone call to establish this. And that comes from um, W Path Standard of Care, Volume 7, direct from there. So, then we have the minimum credentials um, of mental health professionals who are qualified to complete the GCS prior approval request form or referral letters. This is Appendix B. So, um, the following are recommended mean, mean bleh, bleh, sorry, <laughs> getting a little dry mouth, I've been talking a lot, so. Um, the following are recommended minimum credentials for mental health professionals who work with adults pre presenting with gender dysphoria. A master's degree or its equivalent in a clinical behavioral scientific field. This degree or more advanced one should be granted by an institution accredited by the appropriate national or regional accrediting board. The mental health professional should have a documented credential from a relevant licensing board or equivalent for that country. Competence in using the Diagnostic Statistic Manual of Mental Health Disorders, or the DSM, and or the International Classification of Diseases for diagnostic purposes. Three, the ability to recognize and diagnose coexisting mental health concerns and to distinguish these from gender dysphoria. Four, documented supervised training and competence in psychotherapy or counseling. Five, knowledgeable about gender nonconforming identities and expressions and the assessment and treatment of gender dysphoria. Six, continuing education in the assessment and treatment of gender dysphoria. This may include attending relevant professional meetings, workshops or seminars, obtaining supervision from a mental health professional with relevant experience, or participating in research related to gender nonconformity and gender dysphoria. In addition to the minimum credentials above, it is recommended that the mental health professionals develop and maintain cultural competence to facilitate their work with transsexual, transgender, and gender nonconforming clients. This may involve, for example, becoming knowledgeable about current community, advocacy, and public policy issues relevant to these clients and their families. Additionally, knowledge about sexuality, sexual health concerns, and the assessment and treatment of sexual disorders is preferred. Mental health professionals who are new to the field, irrespective of their level of training and other experience, should work under, under the supervision of a mental health professional with established competence and assessment and treatment of gender dysphoria. Um, yeah. Note, in New Brunswick, which is me, so this one, um, GCS trained physicians, nurse practitioners, psychologists, specialized registered nurses, and registered social workers with a master's degree are qualified to complete the GCS prior approval request form. Only physicians, nurse practitioners, and psychologists are qualified to complete the supportive referral letter or the assessment referral letter. So, again, um, I have to get one from my psychologist and my endocrinologist. I'm not entirely sure if my psychiatrist um, has much experience with um, transgender patients other than myself, and you know, of course it's not my place to ask. He's got good enough um, understanding and sensitivity with me, but then again I don't know the level of his um, training and expertise. But given what the requirements for New Brunswick health professionals in here, he already meets the criteria, so I'm all good, thankfully. And then we have Appendix C, the list of the procedures again, and then, and then the Appendix D is um, a signed declaration um, that says, I declare that I've obtained training in the area of gender confirming surgery or gender dysphoria. My training includes attending relevant professional meetings, workshops, seminars, supervision from a mental health professional with relevant experience, participating in research related to gender nonconformity or and gender dysphoria or other. And again, that's um, a signed declaration for you know my health professionals. So it's a very small thing that I have to fill out for this form. There's not a whole lot. Um, it's gonna be a bit of running back and forth and getting my two health professionals to get get the forms done and get everything signed properly. Um, but it, again, it shouldn't be too bad. It's not a whole lot right now. Um, the way I ended described, yes, you just fill this out, you send it off to the clinic, they come back to you with all the package and stuff, and then they reach out to the, um, to the New Brunswick Medicare, 
and then then they all work it out together and then you finally get the word and your surgery date and then you can go from there. So yeah, it's going to be a lot of waiting, a lot of mailing, a lot of getting forms and stuff, but it, getting the ball rolling and that's, that's the thing. So anyway, I hope that was informative and it was very interesting for me, very exciting to finally open this up after a few days. I just wanted to share it with you. Um, anyway, I hope you guys have a great weekend and I'll see you again.